you know, I'm a fan of Mega Beatman's True Blue reviews and his reviews of the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. And I've also noticed that Geek Revolution has gotten into it recently. Because primarily the one thing they're both reviewing, and I don't know if Mega Beatman is going to do this every week, every month, I don't know when. I mean, I don't know when he's going to continue it. But, Mega Beatman and Greek Revolution recently, recently reviewed a four-part story arc that came out five years ago. Basically, around the time for Sonic's 20th anniversary. Now, it's ironic that they're talking about this. It's, it's ironic that they're uh, talking about this. Um, if you will. Because, recently it was announced that after the Shattered World Crisis, the Shadow World, oh, the, uh, World Tour 2, or should I say Shadow World, World Tour 2 or World Tour 3, whatever you want to call it, Sonic, Sonic Unleashed adaption is over, that the next adaption will be Genesis of a Hero, an origin story of Sonic. Now, the, the reason the reason uh, this is coming out is it is coming out in t to celebrate Sonic's 25th anniversary. Now, a lot of people might think, well, that kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it does sound familiar. Don't get me wrong. But let me explain to you why this is happening. One, recently, over the past few years, or at least the past several years, since the new retcon since the new, new soft retcon reboot came into play with 252, we have had several origin stories in some, uh, some of these Super Digest and Super Special magazines of Sonic the Hedgehog. We've had a lot of them. We've had Sally's, we've had Bunnies, we've had Antoine's, we've had Rotors. I think we even had Tails, maybe. Well, I've had it indicated anyway. And we even dedicated a four-part arc in Sonic Universe to Nicole's. Now, what's interesting about this is that of all the origin stories that we got, we never got an origin story for Sonic. Now, of course, with Sega, you never know what, what you can and cannot do with Sonic. Well, lately, it seems that Sega has... Uh, relaxed their tight grip or let loose their tight grip on Sonic has kind of you know allowed a, little, uh, allowed a little bit more flexibility so with that said we've been seeing a lot of classic Sonic designs showing up in flashbacks that take place in the stories which has basically led us to Genesis of, Genesis of a Hero coming uh, around November. Now, what's funny about this is originally, um, originally, shattered, originally, Panic in the Sky, if it wasn't for the delays, Panic in the Sky would have started around May, it would have gone through May, June, July, August, would have ended in September. But because of the two month delay or two issue delay, you're looking at July, August, September, October. But if no delay would have happened, you would have been looking at May, June, July, August. Which meant you would have ended the year with Genesis of a Hero. Now, when one thinks about Genesis of a Hero, some might think it sounds like it's going to be a retelling of the last Genesis story uh, that uh, was written for the tw for the twentieth anniversary, that being Sonic Genesis. Now, Sonic Genesis um, was created, yes, to tie in with Sonic's twentieth anniversary. There is no doubt about that. It was pretty much indicated that this was to tie in to 
Sonic's 20th um, anniversary. And it was built up very well. It was built up very, very well. Um, basically, long story short, um, it all began like in the later issues of the 100 of the 100 portion of the 100 issue portions of the of the uh, of the comic basically as we were getting close to issue 200 from a storyline perspective Eggman was starting to lose his grip on reality lose his grip on his on his sanity because no matter how good his plan was no matter how unstoppable uh, how unbreakable or how perfect the plan might turn out to be it always blows up in his face thanks to Sonic and, his, and the Freedom Fighters defeating him so basically what happens is he's getting to this breaking point that in issue 200 when him and Sonic have a looks like a final showdown a final showdown and Sonic once again beats him he finally just loses it rips off rips his mustache rips parts of his mustache off and starts just going into blab blabbering you know mumbling blabbering kind of you know what what is he saying you know even he I mean even to the point that from the story perspective he even has Sonic concerned and even has Sally who comes in after it's all said and done wondering what happened and having Snively basically explain to Sonic you broke him that basically time and time again in it seems like time and time again every time he comes up with an idea to defeat you you always find a way to throw back in his face and defeat him so basically Eggman goes into insanity Snively takes this as an opportunity to take over along with the Iron Queen of the Iron Dominion. Puts Eggman in solitude in a straitjacket and padded room, which Eggman of course escapes, still in a blithering idiot kind of uh, insanity mindset, insanity, insanity mindset, tries to go after Sonic. Sonic doesn't even know if this guy's straight his Sonic still well, Sonic kind of sees that Sonic Eggman's head is not on straight steel. So basically takes the advantage to beat him again. And then this time they lock him up in their prison cells. And it's only here where he's locked up in their prison cells that Eggman starts to slowly regain his sanity. He starts to slowly regain his sanity and starts to realize there's a reason Sonic beats him. It's because Sonic is connected to the power of chaos. That's right, he's, he's connected to the power of chaos, so this sort of, this basically starts to bring him back to sanity, and he comes up with a plan, once he regains his sanity, retakes control of a Robotrop, um, uh, of, uh, of, his, of his headquarters, retakes control of it, of Robotropolis, I should say, or Mobi New Mo Metropolis, or whatever they called it, takes control, and then uses all the Eggman legions that he's now that are now, now working for him. He makes a deal with Linda, Linda, who is uh, Julie Sue's sister, uh, sister of Julie Sue, uh, Knuckles' love interest at one point in the comics. Makes a deal with her. And thus, well, he'd already made the deal, is what I'm saying, but still continues that deal on later, even after he regains his sanity. In every Dark Legion chapter, or Dark Age Le Le Legion chapter that he has, starts to slowly work on a project they're not aware of until it's too late. And that project is the uh, building and resurrection of the Death Egg, known as the Death Egg Mark II. And the reason he does this is so he can use it to create what is known as a Genesis Wave. But he needs something to help him accomplish that goal. He ends up getting it in the form of a blue Chaos Emerald, which he uses to activate the Genesis Wave. 
The reason he wants to activate the Genesis wave, he pretty much figures that if he recreates and reshapes reality in his image, that not only will he finally have control of the world without, with no resistance whatsoever, but that Sonic and his friends will be erased from existence. However, once again, the plan backfires because he doesn't realize that not only does he wipe the slate clean, though the planet clean, try to re trying to uh, recreate it, but he also also wipes his memory clean. And thus we end up with the Sonic Genesis arc. Now what's interesting about this as well is 225 also saw the death off screen of Sally Acorn. Hear me out. Basically what happened is Sally and Sonic, and this is a couple of issues after they got back together. Yeah, Ian Flynn after the Iron Dominion arc arc that teased Sally, they kind of teased a little Sally Monkey Con a relationship flirtation even to the point that they did kiss but it was more like as I pointed out in the past more like just a one-time fling that they would have because the story arc demanded something like that I guess um, she and Sonic from basically literally the end of the Iron Dominion arc to issue 222 was slowly thanks to Ian Flynn's writing I guess slowly starting to get back together so not only were they slowly starting to get back together, but come 222 they were back together. But then 224, com 224 comes around, 223, 224 I should say comes around, and things really, really start to go a little crazy. If you catch my drift. But like I said, things start to really, really go crazy. Crazy, if you will. And it's during the separation, and I'm going to show you this right here, where Sally basically meets this. That's right, Sally ends up meeting heads on with that. And this ends up being the result before the Genesis wave, just as the Genesis wave is activated. So yeah, Sally ends up being killed off off screen by uh, Ian Flynn. She ends up being killed off. Now, what's funny though, is because, again, storyline wise, Eggman didn't realize he was rewriting history and trying to alter reality and everything to fit his image. What he had done is he had resurrected Sally back to life, but what he also didn't realize is because her and Sonic were at the epicenter of this along with him, they, doing this whole altered, altered, uh, altered timeline that he had created, which resembles uh, the ending of Sonic 1, Son and mostly into, and then kind of continues, which resembles Sonic 1, and goes into things like Sonic 2 and 3, Sonic and Knuckles. What he doesn't realize is he ends up resurrecting her. And thus, because, like I said, because she, Sonic, and him were at that epicenter, she and Sonic start to regain the memories of the old timeline. They start realizing, wait a minute, something just doesn't seem right, right, about certain events. You know, and why did, you know, because there's certain times in this story where Sonic acknowledges that, hey, it just feels right being with Sally and, Ro and, uh, and her friends. And, you know, they just, you know, at times, you know, th you know and there are just certain moments that it happens. In fact, if I can find it here, because I know she... Because both her and Sonic end up getting flashbacks. Is that that's what's kind of interesting about this, right here? Okay. Right here. This is when Sally starts to remember. So, by her starting to remember. 
again, it kind of it basically makes Eggman's plan backfire on him because he didn't account for the fact that she was going to remember the timeline along with Sonic. Now, yes, they do end up restoring the timeline. Sonic does. Sonic goes super, ends up restoring the timeline, basically getting everything back to normal. Basically, not only restores the timeline, but reverses it to, to just mere moments before Sally gets gunned down by the gun torrent, and as Ian Flynn put it one time, gets turned into Swiss cheese. He's a, Sonic is able to not only restore the reality to what it was, but like I said, is able to go back in time just moments before Sally gets gunned down and save her. However, this is basically almost all for naught because the only because they have to still find a way to stop uh, the egg, the uh, uh, the death egg from roboticizing the entire world. You see, basically, the death egg was also built to be a global roboticizer. That's what it was built to be, a global roboticizer. So, long story short, Sonic is battling the Sil Silver Sonic, he's battling Metal Sonic, Eggman's not making it easy, Sally goes off with Nicole to the epicenter of the Death Egg to try to shut it down to stop the roboticizer, but unfortunately, Sally realizes, along with Nicole, that they can't move the beam. That something is not right. They, that something is that something is not right. Basically, what they find out is not right, like I said, is they can't move the beam. They can't move, move the traction of the beam to either go this way or that way. They can only, the, the only way they can retract it is up towards the death egg. Towards them. So Sally basically makes the decision, and I guess this was Ian Flynn's way of trying to redeem her in the eyes of a lot of fans that didn't like her and always felt that she was hogging the spotlight, Basically, Ian Flynn decided to give her the sacrificial heroic moment by having her set the roboticizer tractor beam onto herself, and thus she ends up getting roboticized and turned into Mecha Sally. And this, which became, and this led into what was known as the Mecha Sally arc, which lasted for basically when you count. The last page of 230, and mostly 231 to 247, from the main comic perspective, lasted 16 issues. Yeah, two years, four months. Yeah, 16 issues, two years, four months. <laughs> Crazy, right? Four, I mean, basically, two years this thing lasted. I mean, not two years, but a year and a half this thing lasted. Not two years. Two years was this one, the Shattered World Crisis, I should say. Uh, but a year and a half this thing lasted. One year, four months. Yeah, one year, four months. So basically, 16 months this thing lasted in the main comic. And then when you count four issues, maybe a little bit more so, of the universe comic, it lasted basically 20 months altogether, almost two years. So, um, yeah, that's what the Sonic, that's what Sonic Genesis uh, was about. Basically, what it was centered around, and what led into it, and what came after it. But unfortunately, Ian Flynn couldn't of officially uh, finish the Mecha Sally arc, which was built at. The, built due to the ending of Sonic Genesis, she couldn't officially, um, how do I put it, she couldn't officially, uh, not him, but he, he, I'm sorry, my, my, my brain's thinking a little bit too much here, he couldn't officially finish it because of backstage politics. Basically, Ken Penders, the former writer, was now getting into a legal battle with Archie Comics over the copyright of certain characters. You know, certain stories had to be altered and edited for certain characters to be removed. Things like that just did not help. And Ian Flynn, he just couldn't finish the com yeah, the Mecha Sally arc, which again was created out of the Sonic Genesis arc uh, the way he wanted. And